My name is Anis Mojgani, and with regards to the constraints or boundaries of um, uh, the stage, one of the things that I was interested in connecting with it was um, there was a couple of ideas of wondering what my relationship to the stage was off the stage, um, and also what was my body feasibly going to be doing that maybe pushed against or felt trapped by those constraints, um, which for me also kind of like was in sync with some of the ideas that I was seeking to explore with regards to um, movement and expression with grief, of having this thing that feels kind of at times that we're pushing against it and it's something that's out of our control. Um, and, and, you know, in watching some of the, uh, the Lintz recordings and the response from the community, um, you know, a couple of things that, that stood out to me was uh, one, um, uh, I believe it was Kate had said something about how you know, essentially like one day there was one thing and then the next day everything had changed. And so like that that idea of things just being sort of so foreign and out of our control and having to kind of like live with that and push against that. Um, and also one of the things, that's, things that struck me is in a number of the videos, even though there was so much sorrow and grief that, that folks were processing over these months and, and still are, that there was also this... Uh, 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 sense of hope and sense of connection um, whether from within the grief or looking to outside of the grief that hopefully we're we're going to arrive at that's more light filled that's more hope filled
Hello, I'm Makino Hayashi. I'm a choreographer for Kizuna. Um, when I listen to the nar narrative from the lens residents, I wrote down all the words that caught my ear and how those words made me feel and I added my feeling during COVID to create a piece. To me, the tiny floor is a canvas that I tell a story on. I'm not a good speaker with words. Sometimes it's very, very hard to say what I'm feeling. And sometimes it's impossible to say through words. And I was thinking about why I dance, um, choreograph, paint, and make film and enjoy, enjoy creating stuff. I express my feelings through it. Choreographing is an interesting thing. It's creation and collaboration with dancers. Sometimes I create stuff that I never expect. It's beautiful, I really love it. It's a chemistry and teamwork to make an art. We share thoughts, feeling, and make things and reach out to more people and to the world. Art can heal and communicate, share ideas and so many other things. It's amazing. It's so grateful to be a part of 10 Tiny Community Healing Dance this year. And I, a lot of gratitude for, for the people who are involved to make this happen. All the audience for watching. Big, big thank you. Thank you.
it by yourself. My name is Sophia Tweed Ahmad, um, and I'm really grateful to be participating in this opportunity. Um, after listening and sitting with the stories that were shared with us from the Lentz community, you know, thinking about the different experiences and really pulled in different emotions and themes that I found threaded throughout the stories. And I decided to incorporate color as a response to those stories. And so the, this like really deep red um, is representing like chaos and rage. Like ocean blue is representing grief and a calmness. I've definitely found that those in a lot of the stories. Paired really well with the tiny stage and you know workshopping, researching where are places that I feel constrained and trapped. Another element um, that I found in the stories was surrendering surrendering to grief, surrendering to rage and chaos. Um, and for me, that came through um, in my vocals of surrendering and releasing. Another theme was stability, and I was able to you know, play with stability or instability with movement as well as with the stage and different areas and maneuvers that I could find stability or lack thereof.
My name is Ola Onipede. The way I incorporated the tiny stage was um, that it was basically a stage that was very reflective of my experience uh, during COVID. And with that, I felt myself, you know, uh, walls closing in, me not being able to um, reach out and, and use the same uh, financial um, accessibility and, and uh, places that I used to go to. And so I took that sense of a, of a tiny stage, uh, that stage being my life. and. And I made the most out of the space. Um, it helped me to refine my artistry and refine my skill set. And, and I took that space and it, funny enough, it allowed me to become closer to myself, me not being able to reach out and go further. I allowed to look inwardly and see what I have uh, within me to, um, yeah, make the most out of this stage of life. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, my name is Belinda Washington and during quarantine, I've found my mind and heart to be in very close proximity to each other, but not completely in sync. And I felt like that was a reoccurring theme with um, all of the different lens stories of people uh, reconnecting with their hearts and their minds and bringing them together. And uh, yeah, this whole process has helped me to, <laughs> to get them back in sync and working alongside each other instead of, you know, letting outside distractions or you know work or something to keep me from from that being that you know uh, viva la free you know being an artist collective um, we have different like uh, people of different skill sets and training backgrounds lengths of time i really do appreciate the range in which uh, belinda and i were, be, were able to come together and the fact that um, Belinda had this symphonic piece and here I come in, you know, with a, more of like a, a more grounded Afrobeat style and it's, it's a very grounded style of dance, whereas Ariel is a very, <laughs> very light, you know, you know, airy. light and airy <laughs> sort of style. So I, I really do appreciate that range and, and mix of uh, collectives coming together and I think it made for a beautiful mix. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that's how they came together and it <laughs> kind of just happenstance. So. Um, that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of, you know, um, situations like this. So, yeah. yeah, the stories from the community really inspired us um, to, I think, forward both of our crafts. Um, so, really appreciate uh, everyone from the community sharing those stories with us. Yeah.
So my name's uh, Sean Keylock, and I'm the artistic director of Sean Keylock Company, based here in Portland. Um, this is Aaron. Hello. Um, Aaron just performed uh, on stage for y'all. Um, so the question about how we incorporated some of the lens narratives in our work, um, we were really inspired by um, some of the residents speaking about this little corner of lens they like to call the gayberhood, or the fact that there's, there's people here, gay people here, who are proud and who are um, getting you know, the word out about um, queer events and, and, and queer life here in Lens. Um, so we were really inspired by that. And what we did is we actually took um, a transcript of their conversation, these two residents. Um, we applied uh, some movement to their words. Um, we were looking at some of the, the themes that came out of what they were speaking about. And um, yeah, and that's, that's what we were really inspired by. Um, and what we were really interested in too is, is how could we express joy, that sense of, um, that sense of uh, pride that they were speaking about. Um, it's something that I think uh, for gay people, it's, it's one of our, our biggest things that we love to do is dance and have a good time and go out with each other. Um, which is something we haven't been able to do over the last year and a half. So, um, yeah, we wanted to, to have that feeling um, on this tiny stage.
My name is Malik Delgado. I'm Rudy Slazuski. And uh, so we sat down and we looked at all the stories on the videos and it was the parallels between each person's story was like, the contrast was like, it was so connected. And it just made me feel like, I'm like, do these people know each other or like, you know? Um, and then just everyone's story about the consistency of just driving back and coming back, like, and that search for something that resembles normalcy and then their willingness to like be more community oriented and, and thoughtful about each other, you know, in their neighborhood. And that was just like, I think that, that sparked a lot of the movement, some of my movement in this, in this dance. Um, yeah, from a, from a literal perspective, I feel like a lot of what we were trying to do was kind of express what not only the, the people in the Lentz community are going through, but just the community at large, which a lot of, you know, there's a lot of cacophony, a lot of chaos, a lot of silence, a couple of years of silence for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and really the, the fact that, that it'll never be normal again. We, no. we wanted to introduce the ideas of the TikToks, the, the passage of time. And yeah, we had um, one of the Lens community members mentioned that, that loss of time. And there's some moments in there like, you see in the beginning, the time sleeping and being in this sleep. And it's almost as if it's like, we've been in this cycle of, of movement for so long and maybe there's just been this disconnect between our between all of us in this world you know and then this like this pandemic almost like woke us up but at the same time it's that that loss of time is like was this a dream does this really happen like we're here again we're doing things we're working we're with our families you know but it's like what happened to that that time yeah i mean we the i guess our main goal was to to try to show the healing process within community trauma. That's, yeah, that was a big, big theme for us. Yeah, definitely. The most important thing we liked was just the raw, the feeling. Yeah, yeah. That comes just like through. the yeah, right. Yeah, definitely. It was through. like because that's life, really. It's yeah. like we're doing this. You know, the steps was that path. Yeah. You know, and like mm. trying to find that, trying to find that. Mm. And then shaking off, coming back and having, finding that path. And yeah, having like, to pivot. Pivot. Mm. He came up with that. <laughs> he was like, pivot. So mm. we've been doing a lot of that. <laughs>
hold each other. Everybody, this whole world is together. My My name is Shweta Ravishankar and uh, as for this choreography, this tiny stage uh, was choreographed according to the segments of the dance. The first and third segment of the dance were more hopeful and cheerful and so you can see that the dancers uh, were moving in all directions and moved their hands out uh, and it denoted a symbol of cheer all around. Whereas the second segment of the dance was uh, depicting a more hostile, a fearful environment. And so you will see that the dancers were restricted uh, to only their space and they did not move around the space. That is how I choreographed for the tiny stage. And as for the uh, lens uh, narrative, I am really thankful that I got to hear all of their experiences. And I worked over a few reoccurring themes that I heard uh, in all the videos, uh, which was let us all be together and the whole world is going through this at the same time. So I, I did uh, choreograph based on a few themes or few words uh, of being together and helping each other. These evoked a sense of community support in me and that uh, really impacted my choreography. Thank you.
With the tiny stage, I wanted to explore it as an apparatus. I feel my body is my playground, so I wanted to use this as an apparatus um, to my playground, like, like a jungle gym to my playground. Um, I also spent time in Lentz before I created my piece, and I spent time here in Lentz Park, and there's this amazing, really fantastic playground over there, so I felt me using this as an apparatus to a playground was very sight-fitting to the Lentz community and Lens Park specifically. Um, using it in that way, I had to really condition my body <laughs> and gain some strength. And I also had to alter my movement techniques, um, which was an incredible challenge, but really fun. Yeah, it was really fun. I think it worked out okay. <laughs> I hope it did. I feel it did. Um, there was one thread throughout the community stories we heard from that really captured me. Um, and it was this strong sense of self-identity. And yet it was gaining more of a sense of self within the community identity. There was clear loyalty and pride within the members of the Lentz community for the community. And the Lentz community, co community coming together to serve members when they have felt largely abandoned and inhibited by the city. It's apparent that Lentz is their comfort, Lentz is their strength, and Lentz is their home. And this strength and identity is incredibly healing.
China has identified the cause of the mysterious new corona coronavirus. The first U.S. case has been detected. I have today declared that the coronavirus presents a public health emergency in the United States. George Floyd, George Floyd, George Floyd, George Floyd repeatedly told the officers that he could not breathe after an officer knelt on his neck. The riots rage out of control. I'm frustrated and I'm angry and I'm, I feel powerless. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! We begin tonight with the emergency unfolding. Incredible 86 wildfires are burning throughout the West Coast, and many cities across the country are issuing air quality warnings. Now there's new research that's got a potential link between wildfires and
Hi, my name is Adrian Lobo. It's been an amazing honor, amazing journey that I went through to, to create this. Yeah, there was a lot of my own journey that came up a lot. And then having to, you know, rehearse the sound news bites over and over was just like, oh my gosh, just like, you know, I chose that though, but I wanted it to be really accurate to the world situation, so. The constraints of the tiny stage was definitely a challenge, but I found that it aligned really greatly with the narratives we heard from people from the Lens community. And my dance piece is pretty much a montage of multiple stories. Uh, one of them being the theme of just being hit thing after thing after thing in this last year, from the pandemic to the riots and the protests to the wildfires and climate change. And I wanted to, you know, mime out the story of what it's like to feel overwhelmed and stressed out. And this tiny stage represented to me like the small houses that the people here live in, or maybe the tent, maybe there's someone in the tent. And it's that feeling of the walls like coming in, just closing in on someone and the dance as a way to pray through it and just break those walls of feeling trapped and reminding people that to come back to prayer and the dance and the expression, the arts is what I think can really help us through these times. Try so hard. Shut down. World change. Fear. Disappointment. Loneliness. Hurtful assumptions. Disproportionately impacted. Police brutality. Fires. Numbed. Loss. Keep on trying. Peer support. Adapting. I cried. Trauma. Self-aware. Healing.
glorious connection. If we can do this, if we can do all of this, what else can we do? Hi, my name is Crystal Jiko Sasaki. Um, so for me, the tiny stage represented this, the feeling of like confinement of our rooms or our houses that we went through with quarantine and kind of like all the shifting and <laughs> metamorphosing and processing that happened for a lot of us in really small confined spaces um, over the last year and a half. And the mirror is kind of felt to me like kind of all my stuff just like staring back at me <laughs> you know um, and for the yeah the community interviews really deeply influenced the piece for me um, the words that I chose I chose a lot of words from the interviews and this was just a small group of them um, and I think just the the theme overall that I really resonated with was the feeling of it's been really hard you know, like this has been a really difficult time, but within that, like there's been so much learning and there's been this feeling of like, well, I'm just gonna do what I can from where I can and others are doing that too and we're still finding community. And there's now, with the breaking down of everything <laughs> that was felt stable for us and the shiftings, like there's all these possibilities opening up and I found that really inspiring. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us for 10 Tiny Dances. This project is a part of the city's Community Healing Through Art initiative, and it's organized by our former creative laureate, Subhashini Ganesan. These dances were performed and recorded in Lentz Park, an active community space that has seen in the last 18 months all parts of our community experiences, from challenges and loss to celebration and reflection and everything else in between. The choice of this location was intentional. The stage itself forces choreographers to build evocative movement art in a confined space. The site builds a purposeful relationship between Portland dancers and both housed and unhoused Lent neighbors. Movement, dance, and storytelling through, through the body, all of these are intimate ways in which we recognize our humanity, create community, celebrate, grieve, and heal. These pieces reflect honesty and vulnerability from community members and a desire to be heard by our community. Each choreographer manages to capture this while being respectful, sensitive, and evocative in designing pieces that highlight not just their artistic excellence, but how their dance form can elevate the stories of once neighbors. The 10 choreographers featured represent a plurality of how dance interprets intimate stories of pain, uncertainty, hope, love, joy, and resilience. While COVID has once again thwarted the intention of gathering in person at Lentz Park and requires us to turn to this unique online delivery, 10 Tiny Healing Dances still highlights how our city's artists are showing up in these isolating times. Art has been, for millennia, an avenue for humans to grieve, heal, and eventually celebrate together. Our current struggles and successes must be accompanied by art that speaks to all of the last 18 months has thrown at us. 10 Tiny Community Dances capture artists and community coming together, recognizing their shared community and feeling each other's stories, even if they are strangers. Thank you for watching and thanks to our dancers and choreographers and thanks to all for supporting the city's community healing through art initiative.